Welcome back to Joe Stunner Boxing. Angelo Leo scores what may well be the knockout of the year against Luis Alberto Lopez. He takes Lopez's IBF's uh, featherweight title. A picturesque knockout, I mean, a more picturesque knockout you will not see. This happened in the 10th round. It was a very even fight, a grueling fight. Uh, lots of mauling, lots of clean punches as well. But in the 10th round, the referee separated the fighters on you know one of many occasions. Um, and Lopez, with that strange style of his, that staccato, rhythmless, um, you know, constantly gambling with his head in the air. He, he, did, he gambled once too much. And in came Leo with an enormous left hook, very speedy, caught Lopez, bang on the jaw. Down goes Lopez. He's never beaten the count. His eyes were open. He tried to move his body, tried to get up. The referee counted him out. And this was literally just out of the blue, absolutely out of the blue. It wasn't against the run of play because it was a very easy, excuse me, very even fight. But <clears throat> Lopez had never been stopped before. Um, came in with 30 wins. 17 of those were KOs. Two defeats on points. Um uh, much earlier on in his career, 2019, he lost a unanimous decision. And then I think in 2018, he lost a split decision, another 10-rounder. But since then, I think the turning point was obviously winning the IBF belt against um, Josh Warrington. Previously, he'd been in Britain and um, knocked out Isaac Lowe, who was previously undefeated. Um, he then went over to Belfast, knocked out Mick Connell in, in five beat Joe at Gonzalez on points. That's a good win because Gonzalez came back to win a version of the title, albeit rather controversially. In his last fight, Lopez this series, he fought Ray Abe, um, stopped him in eight rounds. And sure enough, the road warrior, which is exactly what he is, he's fought in America many times, Britain many times. He goes into Angelo Leo's backyard in Albuquerque. Um, no problem. Another away gig, no problem. Um, he's, I'm, I'm the established IBF champ. Uh, no problem. No, I, I can win this fight. This is, I think this is his fourth defense. Yeah, that's his attitude. You know, I've done it before. And he was looking good throughout the fight, you know, but he just got tagged. And like I was saying, with Lopez, it, he has this strange style where it, it's very staccato. There's no real rhythm to it. There's, he comes and he, he does technically, technically he does things wrong. He leaves gaps in his, in his, um, in his defence, his head's in the air a lot of the times. He pulls out in straight lines with his head up. But he's kind of so unpredictable that he gets away with it. You just think, well, if someone can time him, come either coming in, because he, sometimes he'll spring in, you know, and there's, he'll, up, he'll be up close, he'll still be firing punches up close. Um, sometimes he'll, he'll move around the ring, you know. It, you just can't, you don't know what this guy's going to do. So he's very, very difficult to read. And this was just one of those occasions where I think Lopez kind of switched off for a split second and Leo just happened to fire this fantastic left hook, which caught Lopez right on the button and down he goes. Um, this is the third defeat of his career. Like I say, it's his first stoppage and he was never beaten that count. Never beaten that count. I mean, this was, like I said, this was a really close fight because the first round could have gone either way. I think I gave it to Lopez. In the second round, Angelo Leo came out and really tried to rough up um, Lopez got in close had him on the ropes on occasion Lopez was kind of laughing he's quite an eccentric character but Leo meant business now in the third round Lopez came back as if to say okay you, you had your fun in the second round get a load of this so he, he was the one going forward he was the one um, bullying trying to bully uh, Angelo Leo and he was doing it as well you know he was doing it um, and then I think in the in the fourth round, it, the pendulum swung again towards Leo. It was one of those fights where, you know, I'll win a round, you win a round, you win a round, I'll win a round. You know what I mean? Uh, <laughs> uh, but yeah, it, I mean, both these guys are, are 30 years of age now. And um, so I think for Leo, you know, he came with, a, with a, uh, 24 wins with um, 11 KOs, uh, one defeat. The defeat was to Stephen Fulton. And that was for the WBO Super Bantam title. That was in 2021 um, when Fulton was undefeated, um, and it was a it was a tear up, absolute tear up, um, loads and loads of punches thrown. So I guess you could predict that that Leo was going to be busy in this fight, but 
again, not a very big KO, KO percentage. You know, he's now got 25 wins with 12, which is under 50% as a knockout percentage. The man with the heavier hands, Lopez, has been knocking people out, you know. But but even so, you look at his record of 30 wins, he's got 17 KOs. That's What does that work out as? 55% roughly? Neither of these guys... Um, you know, supposedly had one punch power, but my God, Angelo Leo found a one punch knockout um, from somewhere. You know, a knockout punch from somewhere. It just it 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 was really. I mean, you you quite easily you could have you know one guy five four up or the other guy five four up going into the twelfth into the tenth round, completely negated by that one punch. Incredible. Um, I guess you'd call it an upset. I think Leo was was the underdog. But I was a live dog. Um, and no one, I think, was more shocked than Luis Alberto Lopez by that punch. I, he didn't see it coming. Afterwards, he was sitting on the stool, sort of looking a bit sheepish, as if to say, well, what happened there then? Uh, and, and Leo was on the turnbuckle celebrating before the ref had even counted to 10. The ref needed not count. He could have counted to 30. And uh, Lopez wouldn't have got up. But it was an exciting, grueling fight. Lots of up close mauling. But at the same time, there was plenty of, you know, you have a go, I'll have a go exchanges. A rough and tumble, raw fight. Um, and congratulations to Angelo Leo, who is the new IBF featherweight champion, right in that featherweight mix. I'll tell you what will be a good fight, him and Nick Ball. Oh, yes, yes. They both bring it. They both go forward. I'd love to see that fight. I really would. Um but yeah, a new champ. So what did you think? Did you see this fight? Did you like it? What did you think of Leo? What do you think of Lopez? Could you see that coming? I certainly couldn't. I, my prediction, I, I didn't do a prediction prediction video for this. I thought Lopez would win a close one on points. Um, but I didn't see either guy winning by one punch knockout. Definitely not. Anyway, tell me what you think. Tell me what you think of the fight. Tell me who do you think Lopez, uh, Leo, Angelo Leo should fight next. I'll mention Nick Ball. You may have a different opinion. Pick, pick an opponent, pick an opponent for Angelo and uh, we'll kind of, you know, chew it over and think about, try and pick the biggest explosion because this guy likes a, likes to have a row. So let's, uh, Nick Ball's got to be the one, is it? Two big bulls banging heads. Yeah, that's what I want to see. That's what I want to see. And what about Lopez? Do you think he can, he can come back? Again, he's only 30. Maybe being knocked out will make other people want to face him now. He's always been a road warrior. He ain't scared of going in with other, with uh, opponents in their hometowns. Maybe he can come back. Maybe he's got, he feels he's got something to prove now. But we'll see. We'll see. Anyway, comments below. Please subscribe to the channel if you're new and hit the like button and spread the word about the channel. Joe Stunner Boxing, we want to build it up. So all support is appreciated. What can I say, ladies and gentlemen? Other than thank you very much and bye for now. <laughs>